What is going on Phantom Army? It is your boy Phantom Stilts and welcome back to another brand new audio setup tutorial. Today we are looking at the Streamlabs OBS audio in our microphone settings. These are the settings that I actually use for 2020 and will be using for the foreseeable future because I finally figured out how to make my mic sound professional, concise, clear, and just all around better. So hope you guys are excited. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys are brand new to the channel. If you guys are tired of your mic sounding like absolute garbage, make sure to watch the entire video Without any further ado, let's get right into the video, guys. I make it go. All right, guys. So we are here in Streamlabs OBS. I hope you guys are excited because today, all of that crappy mic audio, all of that crappy sound that you guys have been dealing with is over. These are the settings that I actually use for streaming recording anything I do on YouTube or Twitch or anything within Streamlabs OBS, this is how I make my mic sound fantastic. Now, if you guys couldn't tell the beginning of the video, the audio quality was a lot better than the video quality or the audio quality rather that's coming through my microphone right now because I have all of those filters. The four filters I'm going to show you guys today and the settings for them are going to make your mic sound that much more professional, that much more concise and that much more clear. So let's get right into it, guys. So as you guys can see, the microphone, my HyperX Quadcast, obviously the microphone that's right in front of me here, we have everything turned off as far as the compressor, the gain filter, the noise gate, and the noise suppression is all turned off. So this is just the raw audio coming from the mic. If you guys see, when I stop talking, the mic is actually picking up a horrendous amount of background noise. So I'm going to go ahead and stop speaking for a second so you guys can watch the meter. Watch this. So you guys see those little spikes and those little like little blips of green that are coming across the mic? That's the background noise in my room. Now it's not that bad, but it's also something that you can tweak and absolutely 100% get rid of. It doesn't really matter the mic that you have. These settings that I'm going to show you are going to make any mic sound like the beginning of the video, which I think sounds very professional, very clear, and very concise. All right, guys. So the first thing we're going to do is actually select our microphone. I'm going to show you how to do that. So within the settings, this little cog down here that says settings, you're going to go into this, go into your audio tab, and then you're going to do a couple things here. So like I said, my HyperX Quadcast is a USB microphone. So that means that the microphone itself is just a plug and play microphone. So once the drivers are installed, once the mic's installed onto the CPU, you are good to go. Now, if you have an XLR, it's going to be a little bit different. You're going to have to hook up a mixer and all this other stuff. Now, there's a very hot debate in the industry right now whether a USB mic is better than an XLR mic. Now, I don't really like fiddling around with mixer settings. Um, I don't really think they're necessary. Uh, you can do everything within Streamlabs OBS that you can do with a mixer. There's very little that you can't do with uh, Streamlabs that's available on a mixer. So what you're going to do first is you're going to select your microphone. Now, if you have a USB mic, like I said, it's going to show up right here. You're going to go to mic auxiliary device one, and you're going to select your microphone. Like I have the HyperX Quadcast. Very good mic. It's about $139, but it's worth it. Trust me. I've been using this mic for about two months now, and I absolutely love the hell out of it. The special thing about this mic is it's a streamer's mic. It's made for streaming. So it has four cardioid patterns. It has an omnidirectional, a bi-directional, a uh, stereo, and a, uh, let's see, what is the fourth one? It's omnidirectional, bidirectional, stereo, and cardioid. That's what it is. So cardioid is made exactly for streaming. So the cardioid pattern is a heart-shaped pattern. So it covers the entirety of this mic right around, right around to the back of the mic. The bidirectional covers the front and the back. The omnidirectional picks up everything in a circular pattern and in, in a certain circumference or diameter around the mic. And then the last one is the stereo. So it'll pick up what's on the side of the mic on the left. It'll pick up what's on the side of the mic on the right. So if you guys want to pick up a good studio microphone for streaming, I would definitely recommend this one. So the first thing you're going to want to do is actually highlight your microphone. So we have the microphone HyperX Quadcast right here that I'm using. So we're going to go ahead and select that. That's how my microphone is being picked up in OBS over here on the right. I actually notice there's a huge difference between the audio quality. So what I like to do is set my sample rate to 48 hertz. That means that there's going to be a better sounding better sounding audio clip that's coming out of the actual microphone. And then you're going to go to channels. You're going to set that to stereo. That's uh, that's so people can hear you if you're talking on the left side or the right side of the mic. So now that we're done setting up our actual microphone, this is just the brass tacks of setting up your microphone. The sample rate, 
the channels it's going to go through, as well as the mic and auxiliary device that you're going to be using for the microphone. Now, like I said, we've stripped down absolutely everything. So what you're hearing out of the microphone right now is the raw, unedited audio with no filters whatsoever. So the next thing we're going to do is go into our output tab. Now, our output tab is uh, exactly what you think it is. It's the output of everything we're doing in the recording. So you can actually have different output modes. As you guys can see, there's a streaming, there's a recording, there's an audio and a replay buffer. Now I've never used in my time using Streamlabs, I've never used the replay buffer. I don't really see the point. Uh, so the three things we're gonna worry about is the streaming, the recording and the audio. Now the recording is uh, a little bit tricky if you don't know what you're doing. Now, I, use the, I, I actually use the advanced output mode because it gives you a lot more options as far as your audio is concerned when you're recording. So the recording stuff we're gonna worry about is the audio tracks right here. So I like to have my microphone audio when I'm streaming. Actually, with Twitch or any streaming service, they only allow you to use one audio track, but we'll get into that in a second. So with recording, you have a little bit more freedom than you do with streaming. Now with, with recording, I like to have two tracks. So I have my audio from the mic on one track and I have my audio for the game, whatever I'm recording, the trailer, whatever, on a separate track running through my Elgato or my capture card. So I like to select at least two tracks for recording and then all of this stuff is all video related. So you don't need to necessarily worry about this if you're just trying to get your audio set up. So next thing we're gonna go into the audio tab here. So this is the audio track. So I like to name my audio tracks. That way I know which one is which. So the first thing you're going to select here is uh, the name. So you're going to name each audio track. As you guys can see, I have my Elgato HD60 and my HyperX Quadcast, both uh, differentiated between which audio track the sound is coming from. So you can name these at your leisure. It doesn't matter which one is first, but when you're recording or when you are streaming, whether you're streaming or recording, it makes a huge difference because if you don't have all of the tracks on one track, you're not going to hear either the recording of the audio from the microphone or the recording from the uh, capture device, whatever you're using to record the gameplay. So if you don't have them all on one track or have both tracks selected, one, you're not going to hear. You're not going to hear the raw. You're not, you're not going to hear the uh, microphone audio and you're not going to hear the game audio. So you want to have all of the stuff if you're streaming on one track or both tracks selected. So like I said, with recording, it's a little bit different. You can isolate the audio tracks and then dub them over together if you're using a program like Sony Vegas, uh, After Effects, video pad editor which is the one that i use so the next thing you're going to do after you name your audio tracks and you have them differentiated how you want you're going to select the audio bit rate now the audio bit rate is the amount or quality of sound that's coming out of your microphone or any device that you're uh setting the audio bit rate for so what i like to do there's a couple different presets i always go for the highest quality i possibly can with audio because if you're streaming or you're recording and you have bad audio, nobody's gonna watch your video. So I like to set it to the highest possible bit rate that I can, which is 320. So I set it for the microphone down here, which is my audio track two. And then I set it for the Elgato HD60, which is the 320 uh, that I set for that. So with this, I leave every other track the same way. Uh, I leave it at the default 160 because we're not using track three, four, five, or six. Um, so we don't have to worry about these. The only tracks we're worried about is audio track one and audio track two. So with that said, we're going to get right into the filters, guys. This is where the meat and cheese is of the video and what's going to make your microphone sound the best. So we'll go ahead and close this down. So guys, now that we have our audio and everything with our bit rate set up and our mic actually selected, so it's picking up sound, we're actually going to get into the meat and cheese of this tutorial, which is the filters. So we're going to go in down here. Now that we have our mic selected and it's picking up sound and the input from our microphone, we're going to click this little cog right next to microphone HyperX Quadcast or the microphone that you have selected for your input device. So we're going to go ahead and hit this little cog here. We are going to go to filters. Like, like you guys see, I already have four filters and these are the filters you guys are going to want to use. So first we're going to go over the noise gain filter. So the noise gain filter amplifies more or less the raw sounding microphone audio of the mic that you have. So if your mic is very, very soft or very, very loud with loud mics, you're going to tentatively want to use this filter. 
Uh, you sort of have to play around with the settings to get it just right. But the setting I use is about 5.1. I find that's a good volume for my microphone. It tends to get right over the top of my gameplay, but not too loud to where you're blowing your absolute eardrums out. It doesn't get that loud. So when I turn on the gain filter, you guys are going to notice a sound change in the microphone. Uh, it's going to get a little bit louder, but not so loud that uh, it's going to blow you guys' eardrums out. So if you're wearing headphones, I promise it's not going to get that loud. So we're going to turn on the noise gain filter. And like I said, that just amplifies your um, natural sound of your mic. Now, with that, we're going to get to the noise suppression. So with the noise suppression, what it does is you don't want to have this on a really high setting. And I'll show you guys the one that I have. I have it at minus three. It's almost to absolute zero. So the noise suppression is just the stuff that's in your room. It's going to negate all of that background sound. So like when we were looking at the very beginning of the video, when those little blips of green were coming across, that's going to negate all of that background noise. That could be coming from your Xbox, from your monitors, could be coming from your PC, could be coming from anything that's making noise in your room, a fan, anything. So I'm going to turn on the noise suppression for you guys here, and you guys are probably going to hear a difference in the microphone already. Now, with the noise suppression and the gain on, you're amplifying your microphone and you're cutting out background noise from everything in your room. Pretty cool. Now, the next filter we're going to get into, guys, is the noise gate filter. Now, the noise gate filter does kind of what the noise suppression filter does. It's a little bit different. Um, so with the noise gate filter, it, it works on decibel levels. So with the decibel levels, when you go to the noise gate filter here, so I'll show you what I'm talking about. So there's a closed threshold and an open threshold right here. So with the open threshold, the open threshold picks up audio that's higher than this. So if your voice is louder than negative 27 de or excuse me, negative 25 decibels, it will pick up everything that you're saying. If anything in your room or anything about your voice or bumping your desk or anything that is lower than 35 negative negative 35 decibels, it will not pick it up. So this is really really cool if you're trying to get rid of background noise just auxiliary noise in your room, things that are making noise that you don't want to pick up in your mic audio, this will negate all of that. So these are the settings I like to use. So we have negative 35 for the closed threshold and the negative 25 decibels for the open threshold. The attack time, the hold time, and the release time, I don't really mess with. I just leave those as default settings and they seem to work really well for me. So we'll go ahead and like I said, you guys are going to notice a change in the microphone. Uh, it's probably going to make a little bit of a weird noise, but we're going to turn the noise gate filter on and you guys will see how it changes the microphone audio. So now that we have the noise gate on, as you guys can see, when I stop talking and it drops below that negative 25 threshold, it's going to stop picking up everything in the room. So watch it go blank. Move this window over here so you can see what I'm talking about. See how we don't have those little blips of green anymore? It's not picking up any background noise, and I have those tailored to the settings in my room. Now, if your room's a little bit louder, you're going to need to tweak these settings. If they're a little bit softer, you might need to use so much uh, of the close and open threshold. So the last filter we're going to get into is the compressor filter. Now, the compressor filter is probably my favorite filter out of the four because of what it actually does to your audio. So there's a lot of peaks in audio where if you're having something really exciting happen in the game, your mic will peak to the red, and we don't want that. As you see, as you can see, when I p -p 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 -p, when I get really kind of loud, it peaks into that red bar, which we don't want. That's going to make your audio sound really, really distorted. Now, the compressor, what it does, if your voice is too soft, it'll amplify your sound. If your voice is too loud, it will decrease the decibel level of your sound. So it creates this little sweet spot, this little pocket, where your audio is going to sound perfect, whether you're loud. Whether you're loud or whether you're soft, it doesn't matter. The compressor will create that sweet spot for your audio and make your audio sound perfect, no matter if you're too loud or too soft. So we're going to switch the compressor filter here. Now, the first thing we're going to go over with the compressor filter is the ratio. Now, the ratio is how much sound it's going to compress based on the raw edited audio of your mic. So I have it set at 10 to 1. That seems to be a good sweet spot for me. Now, the threshold setting is how loud you can get and how low you can get before it starts compressing the audio. So I have mine set at about negative 25 decibels. That seems to be a good sweet spot for me. Uh, the attack, that is how long it takes your mic to pick up the sound. And the release is how long it takes for the sound to go away. So I tend to keep those, the attack at about 6. I tend to keep the release at about 60. Now, the attack and release times are in milliseconds. So it's very, very fast. So you want your attack speed to come on as soon as you start talking. That's why I have it at 6. And then you want your release to be not so, not so fast that it's going to cut off every word you say. 
but you want it uh, slow enough to the point where it's picking up everything you enunciate and then turning off. So I leave those at about six for the attack and release is about 60. And then the last thing we're gonna go over, actually two last things we're gonna go over because the uh, side chain and ducking source is actually kind of important. Um, the output gain is how much gain you're adding to the compressor after the audio gets compressed. So the audio, like I said, is going to create that sweet spot. Now, if that sweet spot is not loud enough to where you're getting in sort of a little bit over the green or into the yellows of the audio levels, you want to increase that output gain till it gets right in the middle of that yellow line. So if it's getting a little bit to the red, a little bit to the green, you want to decrease or increase depending on where it's at. So I have mine set at about two. I have a pretty natural, like low sounding, uh, booming voice, I like to think. So I don't set it very high and I don't set it too low. I set it about right in the middle at two. So the last thing we're going to go over is the side chain and ducking source. Now, I've seen a lot of people do these tutorial videos where they say side chaining or ducking an audio source is a good thing. Now, this is up to you, how you want your stream or your recording to sound. Now, side chain or ducking is basically brass tacks is it's taking an audio source such as your microphone or your Elgato and what it does is it compresses the audio to the point where if you're talking say you picked your Elgato you have raw audio or the audio of the game coming through if you pick your Elgato when you talk in the mic the audio from that audio source is going to dumb down or get quieter when you're done talking the audio source will come back now I've used the sidechain or ducking audio in a previous tutorial, and I didn't really like it. Like I said, you can use that at your leisure. It's completely up to you. But these are the settings that I use. We'll turn on the compressor, and as you guys can hear, and we'll click done here, the audio actually sounds 10 times better. You see, I was talking about those peak levels. They're now, they were in the red before, now they're sitting right about in the middle of the yellow. So this is the audio settings that I use, guys. Like I said, not every mic is tailored the same, but these are the audio settings that I use. So if you get a HyperX Quadcast and you have a similar voice to mine, these settings are going to be perfect for you. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys are brand new to the channel. I really appreciate you guys checking out the audio tutorial. tutorial. If this helped you out at all, please let me know down in the comments or like the video. It really helps out the channel. Without any further ado, this is your boy Phantom Stilts. Thank you guys again so much for stopping by the channel. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next one. Take care, guys. I make it go.